Lord Clark will give the explanation of the court's judgment. These appeals raise questions about corporation tax, and in particular the available of cross-border relief and the method of quantifying such relief. Marks and Spencer's PLC, M&S, claim group relief in respect of losses sustained by two of their subsidiaries, MSD, which was resident in Germany, and MSB, which was resident in Belgium. M&S began to expand its business into other countries in 1975. It was successful for some years, but by the end of 1990, it had already begun to incur losses. And in March 2001, it decided to withdraw from its continental European activity. It was able to sell its French and Spanish subsidiaries to third parties, but no purchases were found for MSD or MSB. Uh, both MSD and MSB ceased trading and were dissolved at various dates between 2001 and 2007. The claims were originally made and refused by HMRC over 10 years ago. Uh, the basic contention uh, for M&S underlying all these claims was that the provisions in UK legislation were contrary to Article 43 of EC, now Article 49 of TFEU, on the freedom of establishment and were therefore unlawful. The ECJ gave a preliminary ruling holding that Article 43 EC did not preclude provisions of a member state which prevented a resident parent company from claiming group relief for losses incurred by a subsidiary in another member state. This case was last before the Supreme Court on the 22nd of May 2013, when Lord Hope gave judgment on the first of five issues. The court held that the correct date to identify the circumstances in which it would be unlawful to preclude cross-border relief for losses, the no possibilities test, was the date of the claim, not the end of the accounting period. As a consequence, uh, one of the issues, issues three, did not need to be answered. That left three issues. Issue two, can sequential stroke cum cumulative claims be made by M&S for the same losses in respect of the same accounting period? Issue four, does the principle of effectiveness require M&S to be allowed to make fresh, fresh pay and file claims? <coughs> Uh, issue five, what is the correct method of calculating the losses available to be transferred? Uh, the courts below did not analyze the issues in quite that order, but they held in essence that the answer to issue two was yes, M and S were in principle entitled to make sequential uh, stroke consequential claims in respect to the same accounting period. As to issue four, uh, part of which was treated as part of issue two, they held that both the principle of effectiveness and the principle of certainty did allow M&S to make fresh pay and file claims, provided that they were not time barred. However, they held that the pay and file, file claims were time barred. As to issue five, they preferred the method of calculation advanced by M&S to that advanced by HMRC. Uh, M&S appealed to the, this court on the time bar point, whereas HMRC appealed on the issues on which they had lost. The Supreme Court unanimously dismisses all the appeals for reasons set out in a judgment which I prepared. The reasons were very shortly these. Issues two and four, as a matter of domestic law, there is no support in the provisions in part eight of schedule 18 to the Finance Act to support the conclusion that only one claim can be made. On the contrary, the provisions contemplate this, that successive claims can be made. Uh, the, uh, there is uh, nothing uh, in the conclusions which uh, we have uh, reached that offends against the principle of legal certainty, certainty and the legislation 
uh, must be and has been construed so as to ensure that uni European community law rights are effective. Uh, in short, uh, MS uh, are entitled to advance uh, their claims provided they are not time barred. However, the relevant pay and file claims are contrary to the submissions of MS now time barred. Issue uh, five. The direct method for calculating the losses available to be surrendered is the one contended for by M&S. It begins by applying the local rules to determine whether there's a loss in a particular period, and if so, the amount of the loss that remain un remained unutilized. The unutilized loss calculated by reference to the local rules is then converted to UK principles. That approach does not give the parent company greater relief than would have been available had its subsidiary been resident in the same state as the parent, whether in Germany or in the United Kingdom. 